Hey everyone, so this video is highly requested. Today I'm going to show you how to animate a digital fashion lookbook with sketch and principle. I'm going to show you the process and the 10 steps I do to do every prototype I'm uploading to Dribbble. So let's go. The first thing I do is I design each state of the, of the interface in sketch. If I'm going to do a slider, I, I do both, like one, the first slide and the second one in sketch. And second step is importing that into principle. So once you import it onto principle, um, you start linking the layers by name, and that's step three. This is a tricky part. Uh, I never found yet a way that is simple enough. Um, I always get like complications with this step. I just make sure that every name has the same, uh, every layer has the same name in both instances. Um, I sometimes go back to sketch and tweak some things and go back again to principle. Because um, there's just some things that you can't do in, in principle. So here's a real time of how I rename the layers. You, you can see that I, I take the time to like find uh, layers that are not the same um, and then I start changing the properties of elements that animate from the first instance to the second one I make sure that I'm changing the properties of each element that I want to, to animate so that principle recognizes okay this element should animate and animate the scale animate the height animate the width um, the position whatever property I want to change in this case, I, I animated the reveal of the group, so I clipped the image by inserting the image into a group and then checking the clip sub layers checkbox. Okay, the sixth step is adjusting the easings. So, this is something that I do, it's not necessarily the best, but I do all the easings the same. Um, I found out that it's easier to do that, um, it's just quicker and it creates good results. The easings are a very important part of the process and the reason is that movements in real life always have easings. So you're always going to see elements doing this acceleration and deceleration. So that's what this curve means. Accelerate, normal and decelerate. Um, and that's what we call ease in and ease out. Um, you can use uh, the the parameter the defaults here, um, but I like this formula 0 0.9 and 0 0.1. Um, I found out that it works pretty well. Um, not, that's not necessarily what you want to do, but it's something that I do and it works. So this is the seventh step, and what I'm doing is designing the choreography of the elements. Um, so when elements do a transition between one state and the other, you want to be totally, totally in control of which element shows up first, which one animates last. Usually, um, this can help you give hierarchy to your elements, to stress the hierarchy that I already did in gave to the elements in the design. Now I'm um, using choreography to improve and to add to that communication, to that visual communication, um, and stress which elements are more important than others. Um, elements that don't matter so much, maybe don't will, will not get as much attention in the animation as well. Um, so it's really important that your animations are informing the user and that are um, improving the communication. Um, I would use animations because uh, for the sake of it um, and that's not the best way to do it. The best way to use animation is to communicate with the animation um, what is happening in the, in the interface. That's, that's your goal. So this is an example of how uh, the slider uh, came out. And yeah, then I, I went to the to the scrolling, that big title that pops up, and the parallax between those photographs. 
I also did the hover for the CDA, as you can see there. Um, I went back to Sketch to do the CTA in black, and then I imported it into Principle. It's really easy to copy paste elements from Sketch to Principle, so it's faster to design in Sketch, copy paste in Principle if you need to add an element. So yeah, then I I started to tweak the the choreography of the photographs, how they came up, and you see I made like a little um, jump between the images so they don't um, show all at the same time, but they are showing like in a in a kind of um, natural way. And here's the drivers. I'm using drivers to do the scrolling animation, um, and you can set like when you scroll this much, like 800 pixels for example, um, move these elements this much, like for example 400 pixels up. So this is all choreography guys, this is almost everything I'm doing here is almost all choreography and very little time for the rest. Um, yeah, the next step is to record the interaction, then put it into Photoshop with a setup of 800 and 600 and then export it as a GIF. Save as web, export as a GIF. I tried it once, I tweaked a little little things um, and then I exported it again. Once I'm happy and I see that it works, I upload it to Dribble, I put the hashtags and the descriptions and then I, um, I upload the full pixels in the attachment, I schedule it and finally, I upload it. This is the final result. So I had a lot of fun doing these interactions. Um, it's super easy. I encourage you to do this. That's it for today, guys. Um, I just wanna say thank you so much uh, for sharing this content. Um, this YouTube family has grown from zero to 1K in so little time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Leave your questions below if you have other requests for future videos. Um, leave your tips for motion design if you have in the comments below. And subscribe because I upload one video every week. And I will see you next week. Oh, and one more thing. Let, make sure to grab the freebie I left in the description uh, as a way to thank you for 1K. Next milestone, 2K. Let's do it.